let's now move on to the next session we now have our next speaker dr vs hariharan sir consultant department of internal medicine at various hospitals including green eagles global health city sundar hospital and h2 hospitals and managing director at dr rahans Medic medicare private limited he has conducted various workshops and presentations and is a recipient of doctors day award ima 2021 he is also the treasurer of ima tambaram an indifferent diabetic when questioned upon his condition may reply i am not ill my pancreas is just a little lazy to bring one such person out from that trance we doctors need to be advanced so we now call upon sir to speak upon the topic recent advances and updates in dm we welcome you sir we request dr nn anand sir to moderate this session also so good morning uh, Good morning, Anand sir, uh, Saravanan sir, Dr. Shruti, uh, Sarveshwari ma'am, and uh, my dear friends here. Uh, this is the most difficult talk, I mean, uh, difficult session for me because uh, to talk after Shruti has done her uh, opening session, it is going to be a little difficult. There is going to be a little bit of overlap, uh, but I think it is worth going through this whole thing again. I will not stand long, I will just go through it fast. Uh, next slide, please. So, this is how most, uh, I mean, uh, patients land up uh, uh, accidentally to us. So, I mean, there will, would be a young person who was just meddling with a glucometer, incidentally had a finger prick, uh, I mean, he was interested having, and then he has a sugar test that is uh, just above normal. Uh, if this was uh, so, uh, I mean, his questions would be, do I have diabetes, uh, what should I do, and how should I progress? Next slide, please. So, I think Shruti went through how uh, we got uh, to the diagnosis of uh, uh, diabetes, all the definitions, how it, the fasting was 140, then came down to 125. So, the current recommendation for uh, the diagnostic criteria would be based on HPA1C, fasting or the two hour postprandial uh, this thing or a random glucose when someone has a random glucose it should be associated with symptoms of diabetes or you need to recheck it again so hpa1c less than uh, 6.5 is pre diabetes 6.5 or above is diabetes fasting gl glucose 100 to 125 is diabetes i mean pre diabetes and above 126 is diabetes uh, two hour plasma post OGT is 140 to 199 is pre diabetes, about 200 is diabetes, and random glucose with symptoms of diabetes, I think, uh, uh, is considered diabetes. So, uh, so, this patient of ours who was not having s symptoms, uh, he would need at least a recheck again. So, the next slide, please. Okay. So, Shruti again went through the classification. I mean, the first three slides would be a repetition of what Lord Shruti said. Uh, so, I mean, you can classify the type 1 is the, I mean, WHO classification 2019. Uh, type 1 is where you have your insulin is not being produced after, I mean, all your autoimmune process. Type 2 is where the either the insulin is uh, not being secreted adequately or is not working well. Then there are hybrid forms of diabetes where you have a slow immune mediated diabetes and uh, then there are few type 2 diabetes who present as ketoacidosis and then even with OHA they are do very well. Uh, then you have pregnancy induced uh, diabetes, either diabetes in pregnancy or gestational DM. And then there is an unclassified zone where, uh, I mean, I think you need to work on this. So, there could be six subclasses according to WHO. Next slide, please. And <coughs> all we do about uh, diabetes is talking about uh, the control of diabetes. So, I mean, when I was a house surgeon, we never had a C I mean, uh, uh, glucose monitor. So, we had to do a venous glucose, sent it to the lab. If Even if we were uh, managing a DK, it would take 2-3 hours for it to come back. Uh, so, the turnaround time would be there. 
so you had to look at urine glucose and even now the older uh, patients who come to us will s s ask urine la glucose irukku sir adu thappilla abdin solitte inno i mean there's lot of people who still think urine glucose is what is supposed to be done we have moved from that to a, a zone where we had fasting pp and we were concentrating on fasting and the postprandial range and then from then we moved on to what is hpa1c that's your glycosylated uh, hemoglobin uh, so i mean when you treat diabetes it is very important to have a1c's that are lesser than 7 in most cases uh, post i mean the preprandial glucose less than 130 at least and uh, the postprandial less than 180 i will i mean but you have to make it individualized based on uh, how long this person has been suffering from diabetes whether the he's risk prone to hypoglycemia or any adverse event of the drug life expectancy you don't want someone who's um, 75 plus with cancer comorbids uh, controlling very tight sugars putting them under, into a hypoglycemia is more risky then knowing whether someone has an established vascular complication uh, and the patient's preference and the patient's uh, resource and his attitude towards uh, the i mean the support system the patient has so i think we should have all these in mind when we have diabetes uh, when we manage diabetes seven would be the mid range 6.5 is where we, you try to push it towards the lower side and for people who are old with other comorbids we will let it slightly on the high side next slide please and the most important question that everyone would like to ask is can you cure me of diabetes or can i get recovered from diabetes so i mean see it's 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 magical when uh, someone has a gestational diabetes and the day they deliver the baby uh, most people go back to a normalcy and then they feel they are cured i mean i think these people are the most i mean they, they think it is cured and most people don't even follow up after that and namma urla vande pregnancy mudichita nalla saapde rested navarada they build up weight and they land up with diabetes again in the next within the next 3 years and then there are few people who are diagnosed to have diabetes uh, they go through a rigorous exercise they go through a good lifestyle modification and then they can control sugars even without medicine so this brings to the topic of diabetic remission so remission is something that is uh, defined as return of hpa1c levels less than 6.5 uh, spontaneously or following an intervention that persists for at least 3 months without a glucose lowering agent that is either uh, insulin or a tablet so you should have hpa1c levels less than 6.5 for greater than 3 months or fasting glucose less than uh, 7 millimoles or the hpa1c uh, if uh, at the end of 3 months it should have come down and be maintained at 6 less than 6.5 so and all these people definitely need uh, screening for complications as well see uh, because i mean there's a u curve uh, with diabetes so after your kidney start getting uh, hammered with diabetes then you you have your glycemic uh, control getting better and uh, but if there's a nephropathy i think it's the nephropathy causing remission so ada defined complete remission of uh, diabetes as uh hba1c levels less than 7 uh, 5.7 for at least one year when you are on follow up partial rem remission is uh 5.7 to 6.4 and uh, they are on follow up uh with no medications for diabetes optimal control is less than 7 and uh, no remission is when someone is uh having hba1c greater than 6.5 so this is how you talk about diabetic remission another most important thing that you should uh, probably pr practice is emphasis on the lifestyle so i mean uh, 
when people were, are talking of diabetic remission, the most important factor that would account to a diabetes getting better controls, lesser medicines or going off medicine is great loss. So if you can cause 10% weight loss, at least in 70% of people you will have uh, pe people going off medicines if they are in early in diabetes or at least cutting down on medicines. So emphasis on lifestyle changes should be done. Uh, next slide. And uh, that is the most important thing. So it involves talking about diet, talking about uh, exercise, good sleep, uh, reducing stress, uh, the other habits like alcohol, I think all these things should be discussed when you talk about lifestyle. There should be emphasis on lifestyle modification. Then there are drugs that could help reducing weight. I mean, now you have drugs that it's, it's diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular risk and other systems, renal, your liver, everything goes together, right? So I think this in, uh, there are drugs that can help reduce weight as well as diabetes. So, and for those people who are morbidly obese and they are, they are not able to do these in spite of doing all these, then there are bariatric surgeries that can help you achieve a remission or better control. So, uh, so other most important thing when you practice is uh, most people are afraid of pricks and if you, um, we like people getting their sugars under control. I mean, euglycemia is what we talk about whenever we talk about diabetes and that's what patients also think. Although we should look at other compli complications. So people don't like getting pricked. Uh, so is there a way of uh, monitoring sugar? So I mean, uh, the next few slides is just going to give food for thought and all of you are postgraduates and undergraduates. You can go back home and have a look into this and uh, learn about this. So there's something called salivary glucose monitoring. So people have tested the saliva. So the salivary glucose rises along with the postprandial time. So your fasting salivary glucose is around um, 2.18 or 1. Uh, that is when you have your sugars below 130. And as postprandial, it raises gradually to two, uh, I mean, it increases. And then it comes back when you again, you have time. So it follows the similar curve, like how you do your fasting and postprandial. And it, it, it could become in future, uh, 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 I mean, uh, something that is non-invasive, where you can have your salivary glucose being tested with biosensors and that could be connected to a device and uh, a smart device that could tell you how much your sugars are and you could monitor it. This is a food for thought for the future. Next slide. Okay. So I think Shruti has talked a lot about CGMS. Uh, I, I mean, from the days of uh, random sugars, then becoming fasting postprandial, uh, then HbA1c, now, uh, most of us uh, talk about uh, continuous glucose monitoring. See, uh, what happens uh, in continuous glucose monitoring is you have a small uh, uh, sensor that is attached to your body either in your arm or your abdomen. Uh, the, uh, that's a sensor that is placed there. It starts measuring your interstitial fluid glucose. It can... Uh, measure it from every 5 to 15 minutes depending on the uh, device. So uh, you can almost do almost 300 sugars in 24 hours. So instead of having more than 3-4 pricks, I mean, uh, you can just have this attached. But you need to know this is measuring the interstitial fluid. Uh, the glucose response to food, medication, physical activity and stress levels can be recorded. So once you stick it, it's, you can have it, uh, there is, uh, depending on the company, whether it's going to be a 7 day, uh, this thing or a, I mean 14 day, you can have it on yourself. And this can help you adjust medications. I'll tell you how. So uh, you have the abort med uh, machine, that is the freestyle one, then you have the Medronics one. And when you do this, you should remember there's a small 
lag in the uh, time from your venous glucose. So every time someone comes to your OP, they will say, I check the venous blood sugar and then at the same time I had a finger prick done, the glucometer never matched. And if you are going to do it for the uh, I mean, uh, interstitial as well, there will be a little change because you are, there is going to be a small time lag from the venous glucose to your uh, plasma sensor. So, uh, because the blood has, I mean the sugars that raise in the blood, then only it diffuses into the interstitium. So, that small lag has to be remembered. And this is how your CGMS uh, reports are given. So, you have You, you have uh, the number of readings that are recorded, then you have a chart in front that says uh, the time in range. So, time from like 170 to 180 is the target that is there and from 180 to 150 you give a color code and above that. So, and then there are low and much lesser levels below that. So, uh, you want your glu glucose to be in the time in range, that is, I mean in the range from 170 to 180. So, the, the glucose is being calculated all through the day, number of readings are there and you will know the number of readings that go through this. And if, once, it, once it is done over like a period of 14 days, you will know the pattern this person is following. You, you will know when hypos are happening, when hypers are happening. Uh, you can definitely adjust the medicines accordingly. You can adjust the timing of the food. Uh, snack, etc., depending on this. So, this brings into the concept of uh, time and range. So, when you have an HbA1c of 7, uh, this happens very often. You will have a person coming with you, a perfect uh, fasting level like uh, 90 and uh, postprandial 160, but his HbA1c would be 8. Then you will have someone who has a normal HbA1c with a little higher uh, fasting and a lower postprandial. So, when you have this, uh, the time in range is the percentage of time the person is between the target blood sugars. So, uh, this is calculated by the uh, average reading over time. So, and uh, see, you can have 7 HbA1c having 100% of glucose in range, or you can have a little lows and little highs and rest of it in the normal range or you can have very high ranges over time and very low, I mean almost 20 percent time in the lower ranges with normal range being there. So, th the ideal one should be at least having 70 percent of your uh, numbers in the range. So, I mean you can tail tailor it for different people like uh, young people with type 1 or type 2, I think 70 percent we should try to have it in range, try to reduce the hypos. Uh, prioritize on reducing the hypos that is time below range and then concentrate on the hypos. So, if you have the 70 percent then you can do it. For older people I think you should be much more relaxed and for pregnant ones I think uh, it is recommended that you have 16 hours in the time in range and lesser number of hypos and uh, it goes on that way. Uh, so, the other thing that is uh, uh, I mean it is talked about as a fancy thing is the uh, insulin pumps. See, uh, all of us try to match uh, the physical, I mean the, the endocrine pancreas being secreting insulin over time. So, you have ins insulin that is secreted continuously over the day and when you have your food etc or when you go through exercise, the, the insulin secretion change, uh, change, changes accordingly. So, insulin pump is something that is uh, fi fixed, uh, there is a uh, what is what's called infusion set, there is a cannula, then there is a reservoir which is with a, with a pump that you have and you can uh, fix it in your subcutaneous plane or sometimes you can put it in, then you have control buttons. You can have a basal level of uh, insulin uh, being timed and uh, run over time. And then when you have your meals, you can give boluses through this. So, uh, that would help you go through the uh, process and get much better controls. So, it can be external where you just put it in your subcutaneous uh, 
tissue or sometimes you can put it even intraperitoneal as well. So there are de devices. Then uh, benefits of insulin pump is uh, you can have lesser hy hypoglycemia, much more better sugar control. Uh, <coughs> you can have better A1Cs, uh, decreased levels of uh, insulin requirement because you can precisely measure and then adjust your insulin uh, level and better quality of life and you reduce the number of pricks that is done. Uh, but there are limitations. The cost is much more and uh, when you get an infection, site infection, it is difficult to use it for time being. Then uh, the risk of uh, decay, so if the insulin pump uh, stops working or if there is an infection and it is not going through, you can land up with decay. So this is the limitations of using the insulin pump. Uh, Artificial in intelligence in uh, diabetes. So, I mean, artificial in intelligence is based on the input that we get. Then you analyze the input and give outputs. And uh, this has been now used in various, uh, I mean, uh, uh, places to improve medical healthcare. So, uh, you can get inputs as text data, you can get inputs as video images or normal pics or you can get bio, uh, biometric data where you have devices attached to your body uh, with those wearables or voice control. So you can get input from all these places. Then they, the analysis done either rule based or the machine does a learning by itself or a deep learning and then gives out output either classification, uh, whether this person has a type 1, type 2, depending on the reports, uh, predicting certain trends, then uh, then you can give feedback as well. This is currently, I mean, diabetes management will advance towards this. And technology in diabetes management is uh, going big way, where you have lots of apps that are being developed to help you control sugars, have better life. So you can uh, track your exercise every day, you can track your weight, you can have feedbacks on that as well. Then you can have your blood glucose mo being monitored, uh, put as Excel sheets, you can, you can have curves being there. Then you, you have lots of people educating about diabetes, uh, change in behavior, uh, all these things through I mean, the technology. Uh, you have uh, uh, apps that uh, where you can take sh snapshots of your food that you eat, put there, try to get a calorie count on what you are doing. Uh, you have medications being uh, um, transported to you through apps, etc. Uh, you, you do healthy, uh, telehealth uh, appointments, you can consult doctors in various parts of the globe through telehealth. So I think technology in diabetes is what is going to be for the future. So. Uh, this has uh, been going on for quite some time now and uh, I think future would, would have lot of technological involvement. So, so at, at the end of uh, the 20 minutes that I have taken, it's very important for you to know that diabetes, I mean, it, for the last 20 years which I have been practicing, there's ha been a lot of change in the way I have looked at diabetes and I have been practicing diabetes and it is going to continue to do so. Although diabetes is, uh, I mean as Shruti said, uh, diagnosed like hundreds of years ago, the initial part was very slowly getting into things. Now you have so many drugs that are coming up, so, so many insulins that are coming up, uh, the concepts of diabetes is changing. I think the focus should be more on lifestyle changes and um, you can use lot of technology into your practice and thereby giving good health to your patients. Thank you for the patient listening. Thank you. Thank you, Hari. That was an excellent uh, talk. I know it's very difficult to summarize everything. Diabetes. So, I'd like to ask a question regarding this calorie glucose monitoring. It's very fancy because people tend to avoid appeals to them. Uh, is it available and uh, what about the infection if the patient is having a respiratory infection there is high chance of false positive or the sugars going up in the saliva 
so uh, where do i use uh, cgms in my practice is like uh, i mean we have specific indications i don't think i put all my patients on cgms and do this i still believe a lot in uh, self monitoring of glucose and then ta tabling it down uh, but then there are a few people like uh, yesterday i had a lady who had an hpmc of 8.5 and then i went through all the questionnaires and she was saying like the fasting was uh, normal i mean the fasting was a little high and the postprandial was low i i went through all the questionnaires i try to see whether i can make a change uh, and but couldn't find an answer that was appropriate i think there are few select people like those who would need uh, the cgms CMS, cgms is available with abort right now uh, as freestyle uh, libro and uh, pro so i think uh, it's available sir any question from the audience if there's no questions we can continue with the session thank you for the interesting thank session you, sir. sir now i like uh, dr n n anand sir the moderator for this session to felicitate dr hariharan sir with a little token of appreciation